in tracing out what we have been studying and it also tells us how far we have understood and if there are any doubts remaining in our mind let us clear all those yesterday i have introduced this chapter and i have told i have asked all of you to write down the structures like all the sugars ribulose sugar deoxy ribulose sugar purines pyrimidines phosphate group nucleosides nucleotides but unfortunately it is observed that none n o n e none of you have put this in our group so i am forced to repeat this structures and i am expected this by tomorrow at least so basically the two nucleic acids so nucleic acid the acids are big molecules macro molecules present in all living cells and Friedrich Mascher was the first person isolated the nucleic acids from the pus cells he called it as nuclein as it has an acidic nature hence altman called it as nucleic acids as i said yesterday there are two types of nucleic acids found in all living organisms one is dna another is rna dna expansion deoxy ribo nucleic acid rna expansion ribo nucleic acid so dna deoxy ribo nucleic acid is the genetic material of all living organisms if someone asks you what is your secret we say our dna so this carries the coded information from one generation to another generation so the information is in the form of code language so we have to decode that it's a longer polymer of deoxy ribo nucleotides yesterday i said nucleotides are three molecules joining together that is sugar phosphate plus nitrogen bases i said sugar phosphate and nitro spn i said spn is equal to nucleotide and since one atom of oxygen is missing we said deoxy and the sugar is ribulose hence DNA is a polymer of deoxy ribo nucleotides and polymer as all of you know you have studied in chemistry is a union of many monomers here the monomer is one nucleotide so like that many nucleotides join together and make a polymer so DNA is a polymer the length of the DNA depends on number of nucleotide pairs present in it in eukaryotic cell eukaryotic eu means clear karyon means nucleus a cell in which the nucleus is very clear is eukaryotic cell the so it is found in the nucleus dna is always found in the nucleus in a eukaryotic cell it is the chief component of chromosomes so basically you have a cell living cell within the cell you go to the nucleus within the nucleus you go to the chromosomes and inside the chromosomes dna will be there and portion of dna is genes and the genes will have coded language and the coded language contains our secrets uh, that generation to generation get information so dna also found in mitochondria as well as chloroplast when i was talking about upsc nda question paper i told you repeatedly this question is asked dna along with the nucleus of the cell it is also present individually in mitochondria as well as chloroplast chemically dna is composed of as i said three chemical substances deoxy ribose sugar phosphate group and nitrogenous bases so there are two nitrogenous bases as you may recall from yesterday's class purines and pyrimidines so basically deoxy ribulose sugar is a pentose sugar penta 5 5 carbon <clears throat> as you are seeing in the ring so it's a pentose sugar having molecular formula c5h10o4 now you can see the structure here take a paper pencil draw it and count the number of carbons you should get 5 as you have uh, you are able to observe in this diagram so 1 2 3 4 5th carbon so it's a pentose sugar and why it is deoxy ribulose at second carbon position carbon 2 position you can observe 
instead of hydroxyl group oh group it is only hydrogen so o is missing that's why deoxy ribulose and what about phosphate group it is basically a phosphoric acid and it has got p o on three sides and oh so it is po3 or po4h you can say and this group combines with sugar the phosphoric acid forms the phosphate group so its molecular formula is h3po4 as you are able to see h3po4 and 2h plus will be going out when it combines with the sugar ribulose sugar so it is responsible for acidic nature of dna we said deoxy ribo nucleic acid that word acid is coming because of the acidic nature and who is giving the acidic nature to dna it is the phosphate group h3po4 now coming to nitrogen bases nitrogenous bases are the nitrogen containing compounds these are mainly divided into two types purines and pyrimidines as i said yesterday in our class purines are having two rings so it's a double ring heterocyclic structural compounds i will repeat purines are the double ring heterocyclic structural compounds the two types of purines present in dna are adenine and guanine i said how to remember in the exam you keep it an abbreviation pag p a g p for purines a for adenine g for guanine so p a g pag or you can write it reverse g a p gap guanine adenine is equal to purines and now take a paper and pencil draw the structure you know, you need to draw two rings double ring structure and then we come to next one pyrimidine pyrimidines unlike purines they are single ringed structures so pyrimidines are the single ringed structures and these two types of pyrimidines present in dna are cytosine and thymine so you can say pic t there for purines we said p and we said gap gap g guanine a adenine p purine now for this you can say it as pic t pic t p y means pyrimidine c for cytosine t for thymine so you can remember it as pic t p y c t so how is that the nitrogen base is getting linked to the pento sugar you can see here there is a glycosidic bond the linkage between the sugar molecule and nitrogen base is through a bond called glycosidic bond so basically you have nucleosides to begin with so what are nucleosides again yesterday i said it is pento sugar plus nitrogenous base so s n so in the in the word nucleosides spelling n u c l e o s i d e s you see first letter is n and in between s is there n and s so you can remember it as n for nitrogen bases and s for sugar so nucleoside is nitrogenous bases plus sugar molecule so that becomes nucleoside a nitrogen base attached to the c1 of the pento sugar c1 means carbon one pento sugar by n glycosidic linkage as you are able to see in the diagram that's how glycosidic bond is formed through this glycosidic bond nitrogenous base is attached to pento sugar and uh, the in nd in uh, dna nucleosides are formed by the combination of deoxyribose sugar and nitrogenous base that's how nucleosides are formed so depending upon what type of nitrogenous base is combining with the deoxyribose sugar we have got names for that if adenine combines with the deoxyribose sugar it is called deoxyadenosine guanine combines with the deoxyribose sugar it is named as deoxyguanosine cytosine combines with deoxyribose sugar it is called deoxycytidine thymine on the other hand combines with deoxyribose sugar it is called deoxythymidine and the diagrams are there all the four diagrams you need to draw take a pencil 
draw the diagrams and post it in our group this is compulsory by tomorrow i should see all the diagrams of all the 47 children and then we come to nucleotides the compound formed by the combination of phosphate group with nucleosides so what is a nucleotide nucleoside plus phosphate so you can say nucleoside nsp so you get nsp nitrogenous base sugar and phosphate that becomes nucleotide so again depending upon which nitrogenous base is combining the four types of nucleotides present in dna deoxy adenosine monophosphate if there is adenine second deoxy guanosine monophosphate if the nitrogen base is guanine deoxy cytidine monophosphate if the nitrogen base is cytidine and deoxy thymidine t for thymine c for cytosine okay monophosphate now here this is how you have to link <coughs> the uh, nitrogenous base to sugar and phosphate so combination of all these three will form nucleotide and you must remember that nitrogen bases uh, nitrogen bases uh, let it be any nitrogen base whether it is purine or pyrimidine it always gets attached to first carbon of the five carbons that are present in the sugar and phosphate group is attached to fourth carbon of the sugar that's how you get a nucleotide and since dna is polynucleotide you must keep on adding one after the other one after the other then it becomes a one strand of a ladder similarly you make another strand so you get a ladder two structures and when it is energized it gets twisted and forms what is called double helix for the discovery of this double helix structure of dna and rna two professors were awarded nobel prize those professors as a, you may recollect professor watson and professor crick and we must be thankful to those two professors because we are able to know the secrets of all the living organisms so polynucleotide strand strand will be like this again take a pencil take a paper draw this you get the nitrogen bases on the right side phosphate group on the left side so number of nucleotides linked with each other by passport diester bond there is a bond passport diester bond and forms a long chain of molecule called polynucleotide strand so if someone asks you what is a dna your answer should be it is a polynucleotidal chain okay so what is a dna polynucleotidal strand and what is a nucleotide it is a combination of all the three nitrogenous base sugar molecule and phosphate molecule nps so the passport diester bond forms between fifth and third carbon as you are able to see fifth and third carbon atom position of pentose sugar therefore polynucleotide strand contains fifth and third end we give the code language like five prime and three prime so keep remembering this and these are the two great professors you can watch them professor watson and professor crick first proposed the structural model of dna in 1953 and they got the nobel prize for their work in 1962 according to watson and crick model the dna contains two polynucleotide strands coiled together in helical manner hence the name watson and crick gave as double helix structure of dna and this is how professor watson looks and we are all lucky that he is still alive so at the age of what is so great about professor watson at the age of 34 he got nobel prize normally at the age of 34 people will be doing phd and at the most pg but here at the age of 34 he discovered dna and he got nobel prize in 1962 at the age of 34 that is the greatness of professor watson and professor crick he shared the nobel prize with him and we must be thankful to these two so they described the structure as follows the dna is a double stranded polynucleotide molecular structure sugar phosphate forms the backbone 
and the nitrogen bases projected to inside the two strands are coiled with each other and are arranged anti parallel just like railway lines will be there no? like that anti parallel if one strand has 5 prime to 3 prime the other will be having naturally third prime to fifth prime in the direction the two strands of dna have the common diameter of 20 degrees angstrom units adenine of one strand pairs with thymine yesterday i said at at and it is connected with each other they are bonding with each other through two hydrogen bonds a double bond hydrogen t and vice versa t double bond hydrogen bond with a so it can be a t or it can be t and a similarly guanine stands pairs with cytosine but here three hydrogen bonds will be there or it can be cytosine through three hydrogen bonds can pair with guanine so it is always g c or c g so the base pair rule is it has to be a t or t a or g c or c g and in between weak hydrogen bond is there and sometimes it is better to have some weakness because through that weakness we are able to break the dna molecule and replication of dna takes place varieties are formed in organisms because of the weakness of the bond hydrogen bond because of the complementary base pairing arrangement if one strand of polynuclear sequence is known another can be deduced normally this is a one mark question in your cbsc exam so just see here we are taking one strand with the 5 prime to 3 prime and we are writing the nitrogen bases a g c t t t a and you have to write complementary but you must remember here you get mark only when you write the direction also if question is fifth prime to third prime you must start with the third prime to fifth prime because anti parallel and if adenine is there you know the base pair rule if the adenine is there in the question in answer it should be t because a t thymine if question contains guanine in answer you should write cytosine and vice versa c g t a t a so write this but do not forget to write the direction third prime to fifth prime so the complementary strand twisted each other at a distance of 34 degrees angstrom units each twist of dna contains 10 base pairs this is compulsory again this upsc nda question how many base pairs will be there in a twist so 10 base pairs the distance normally 34 degrees by 10 it is 3.4 so the distance between the two base pairs 3.4 degrees angstrom units so this is how our dna will be there inside the cell so oh, it looks like a ladder nichenage is you know 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime with nitrogenous bases so sugar phosphate backbone and nitrogen bases are inside so the sugar molecule and the phosphate will form the vertical strands and horizontal strands are formed by nitrogenous bases and when this ladder gets energized it becomes twisted like you are seeing in the right side diagram and i want you to focus on the prime 5 prime to 3 prime and 3 prime to 5 prime and 34 angstrom units and the distance is 3.4 nanometers and in each loop you can see 0.34 nanometers so there is a minor groove there is a major groove and then centrally there are nitrogenous bases and horizontally the nitrogen bases are helping and thanks as i said there is a double bond hydrogen and there is a triple bond hydrogen between c and g and these weak bonds will be broken when we supply a little bit of energy thus dna gets replicated and replication of dna leads to formation of varieties of genes and varieties of genes will be giving way to new characters thus organisms will be a variety further we are able to see this the how the phosphate molecule is there when it is a twisted one nitrogen bases major group 